makes no difference who or what you are, old or young, black or white, pagan, Christian, or Jew. I want to love you all and be loved by you all, and I mean to have your love. Victoria Woodall. Victoria Woodall caused conflict throughout her life by going against the norms of the 19th century American society. She experienced many conflicts, for example, during her run for president and about her free love theory. Her most notable conflict was her involvement in the Beecher Tilton scandal, which resulted in her pivotal downfall. Victoria Woodall compromised with American society by moving to England. In England, she experienced the effects of her conflicts in America. Victoria Woodall's rise to fame began in 1868 when she and her sister, Tennessee Claflin, moved from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to New York City. In New York, the sisters told fortunes and sold medicine. And while they were there, they met Cornelius Vanderbilt, a 19th century business mogul. He became their friend and gave them money. Using this money, the sisters became the first female stockbrokers in America. Cartoons were even made, depicting how Victoria and Tennessee were driving the bulls and bears of Wall Street. The sisters' stock brokerage was successful, so they used some of this money to create their first newspaper, Woodall and Claflin's Weekly. The sisters were also a few of the first women to start a newspaper in America. On April 2nd, 1870, Victoria made history and announced her run for presidency in a letter to the New York Herald. Later that year, Victoria Woodall wrote about how women had the right to vote, according to the 14th and 15th Amendments. Victoria Woodall argued that women are citizens too and that they must be provided the right to vote. Victoria and Tennessee exercised their claimed right to vote, but they were rejected. On November 22nd, 1871, Victoria Woodall gave her speech on her free love theory. Her free love theory states that a woman can divorce or marry a man whenever she pleases. Victoria likely created this theory due to her first unhealthy and young marriage with Canning Woodall. She also may have made this argument due to the high rates of prostitution at the time. Victoria Woodall's free love theory conflicted with the ideals of many other suffragettes, including Elizabeth Cady Stanton, Isabella Beecher Hooker, Frances Dana Barker Gage, and Susan B. Anthony. The American public also had conflicting ideas. For example, the Arizona Sentinel stated that no good man, no honest man, no conscientious man will stir a finger to aid any woman in the fulfillment of any purposes of which this Woodall can be regarded as a representative. Victoria Woodall gave her free love speech at the Steinway Hall in New York City. When she gave the speech, she aroused a conflict because the crowd refused to listen to her and they began a ruckus. But with the help of her friend Theodore Tilton, the crowd quieted down and the conflict was resolved. Victoria Woodall became a good friend of Theodore Tilton, which would later become a big factor in her infamy. Following her announcement that she was running for president, the Equal Rights Party, also known as the Cosmo Political Party, nominated her for president. Frederick Douglass was nominated as her running mate, although even her proposed running mate had conflicting views and supported another presidential candidate, Ulysses S. Grant. Victoria also faced conflict at the Women's Suffrage Convention in San Francisco, California. Here, the crowd protested the introduction of her name on the ballot because it was indecorous. Victoria Woodall was even depicted as a Satan incarnate by 19th century cartoonist Thomas Nash. Just two days before the 1872 election, Victoria Woodall and Tennessee Claflin wrote about the secret relationship between the renowned pastor Reverend Henry Ward Beecher and Elizabeth Richards, Theodore Tilton's wife. The sisters had halted publications of the paper, but they only resumed publishing the paper to announce the secret affair. This spurred the beginning of the great Beecher Tilton scandal. Victoria Woodall even drove the Beecher family apart. For example, Harriet Beecher Stowe, who was Henry's sister and famous author, supported Henry along with most of his other siblings. Some of his other siblings supported Victoria Woodall. The Beecher Tilton scandal was one of the biggest scandals of the 19th century. 
Walter A. McDougall, an American historian, even noted that the Beecher Tilton scandal drove the reconstruction off the front pages for two and a half years and became the most sensational he said she said in American history. Tennessee, Victoria, her husband Colonel Blood, the stereotyper and printer of Woodall and Claflin's Weekly were all arrested for publishing obscene literature through the mail. The sisters even spent election nights in jail. Throughout all this conflict, Victoria still had some supporters, such as the people who viewed her jailing as a violation to her freedom of speech and freedom of the press. Specifically, Isabella Beecher Hooker, who was the sister of Reverend Henry Ward Beecher and a fellow women's rights activist who did not previously support Victoria Woodall and her free love theory, supported Victoria during the Beecher Tilton scandal. The election still continued on without Victoria Woodall. All the other parties had ballots, but Victoria Woodall and Frederick Douglass for the Equal Rights Party did not have a ballot. Just likely one of the main reasons why it is unknown exactly how many popular votes Victoria Woodall received and why the estimates were so low. After leaving home, Victoria was homeless and penniless. The conflict in Victoria's life only worsened because even her neighbors didn't want to live near her. This forced her landlord to chase her out. The conflict became so extreme that Victoria's 11-year-old daughter, Zula Woodall, had to leave her school because the other parents didn't want Zula to influence their children. Despite all of the negative impacts Victoria Woodall experienced because of the Beecher Tilton scandal, it was thrown out of court. After Ulysses S. Grant won the 1872 election, Victoria Woodall and Tennessee Claflin stayed under the radar. Four years after the election, Victoria Woodall finally fought back against the conflict by giving her speeches the human body, the temple of God, and true and false socially. Victoria Woodall gave these speeches because she claimed that she had been greatly misrepresented by the media and is making a tour to set herself straight before the public on account of her young daughter Zula. In 1877, the business mogul who started it all and gave Victoria and Tennessee the original money to start Woodall and Claflin's Weekly passed away. That man was Cornelius Vanderbilt, and his son, William Vanderbilt, gave Victoria and Tennessee hush money so that they wouldn't testify his father's belief in spiritualism. If the sisters did so, it would give credit to the idea that Cornelius Vanderbilt was not in his right mind, making his will invalid. The sisters accepted the offer and made their final compromise with the 19th century American society by leaving for England. Although the American society didn't have a say in this compromise because Victoria and Tennessee left on their own. Victoria experienced the effects of her American life in England where she was questioned by the trustees of the British Museum about the articles she published in Woodall and Claflin's Weekly about the Beecher Tilton scandal. Victoria Woodall married John Biddulph Martin and they lived together in Brennan's Norton Worcester until they both passed away. Victoria Woodall's legacy lives on. Victoria has a signpost in her honor in her hometown of Homer, Ohio. An opera about her life was also created by Victoria Bond. Although Victoria Woodall was the first woman in America to run for president, she's often overlooked in the history of the women's rights movement. Victoria Woodall's actions influenced many other women to go against societal norms. For example, Shirley Chisholm became the first black woman elected to the United States Congress. Belva Ann Lockwood followed in Victoria's footsteps and ran in the 1884 election and the 1888 election. Margaret Chase Smith became the first woman to serve in both houses of the United States Congress. In the 2016 election, Hillary Clinton became the first woman to be nominated by a major political party for presidency. Each one of these women played their part to defy the conflicting ideals of the American society. But Victoria Woodall started it all and showed conflicting America that a woman could, in fact, run for president. After she played her part, Victoria compromised with American society by showing them just what a woman could do.